Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Mechanical Mike. Today what I'm going to do is take this old keyboard, which um, had a drink spilled on it and no longer functions, and replace it with this used one that I uh, picked up on eBay. And we're going to go ahead and show you how to do that. It's a pretty simple process. You only need a few tools. Um, if you've ever fixed your cell phone with your own screen, usually they send you some a kit that comes with... Uh, some of uh, some tools with it and they're pretty handy to keep around and specifically for this kind of purpose so uh, this is something I got when I fixed the screen and this is kind of nice for prying things up and then just a little Phillips head screwdriver a good trick you can use um, it's good to have a magnetic screwdriver currently this is not magnetic if you take like a regular old refrigerator magnet and you scrape it on the back on the earth magnet side <coughs> Suddenly you have a magnetic screwdriver that magnetizes the tip of this. So that will help us pick up these tiny screws that are hard to see. And let's go ahead and get started. Okay, oh, also I have this, this uh, piece of paper here so that I can categorize the screws I use. If you have little bins, that's, that works too. But I'll go ahead and draw a square like this and I will say um, the case. So if this is the back case of the screwdriver, or I mean of the uh, laptop, you can name it whatever you want, um, or casing, I should say. So now I'll go ahead and unscrew that, and let's see if that, mag that magnet might have not have been strong enough to magnetize this, we'll see if that worked or not. And it didn't really seem to, I might need a bigger magnet. What works really well is like a uh, speaker magnet, if you have an extra speaker. And sometimes it works. It doesn't seem to work in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and set these inside that square that I drew. And we'll go through and pull all these out. And it's good to separate them as you go because it's easy to lose track of what screws go where. Another important thing to do is once we pull off this case, to make sure this actually does in fact match this. Um, if you're going to order a new one, it's good to look up the model number, which in this case is right here, and make sure you order a matching model number because they can change slightly from year to year. And there are quite a, diff a few different models of the Chromebook out there. So we've removed all of the screws off the bottom, got them all in my square here. And now this is where this piece comes in handy. Um, <clears throat> now I can see right along this edge, we'll look for a good spot to start. Kind of just work your way in there until it pops out. Slide across that, there we go, it's starting to pop loose. And that's coming out fairly easily. It might be a little bit different for different models, but it should be somewhere along the same lines. Um, plastic is nice because it's less likely to scratch up your computer as you take it apart. And there we go. So, if I flip this around, you can see that it looks like these match up pretty well. So I'm going to have to remove the battery and the uh, motherboard and just move them onto this one. So I'll probably um, just get this removed from the computer before I take these apart and then I'll put them on here. Another good thing to do is get rid of any static. So touch some metal if you can before you do this. So if you have static buildup it can um, damage some of your electronic components. So to take off this, um, the whole component that's holding the motherboard and the keyboard and the battery, it only takes four screws. It's one, one, two, three, four. And those just hold the hinge on that's holding this together. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. What we'll do is we'll draw out another square. And we'll write hinge. And that's where those screws will go. I 
as you go, there's going to be some connections um, and some wire harnesses that you're going to have to disconnect. In this case, there's two. So um, this is powering your LCD screen or LED screen, and it's got a little metal hinge on there. You pop that up, and you should be able to just wiggle that free. There you go. So that hinge locked it in place. I pulled that up. And now your CPU, it looks like you got a white and black. Make sure you remember which side is what. It also says here, main and auxiliary, and one's white and one's black. But I'm just going to remember this by the way I'm facing it is white is right. So I should be able to just wiggle under that and pop that loose. There we go. And there we go. Um, what it might be good too before I do that is, especially if you have juice in your battery, is probably to disconnect your battery actually. So that might have been a good thing to do before you did these. So I would suggest to do that to make sure you don't touch your screwdriver from a hot to a negative and um, short circuit something. So connecting your, disconnecting your batteries up first before you do either of these things, which I should have done. This is just a little bit of tape. Pull that up. And now, if I fold this open, there you go, pops loose. So I'm going to move the screen aside for a second. <clears throat> and I'm just going to go ahead and take these components and transfer them to this side. And since this is stacked on top of that, I'm going to have to take off the battery first. So let's make one more square. All right, battery. And we'll go ahead and remove the screws. If I can, I'll just leave the screws on the battery itself and pull it all out together. Might be a good idea to set them here just so that they don't fall into the computer. Battery screws. Okay. So it should just pull right off, and there we go. Set that aside, because I'm going to want to transfer this first. And it looks like we do have a few more connections. <clears throat> I like that they've changed some of these. Before they used to just, these little strip uh, connections, they used to tape them. But now you got these flip-up connectors. So you see there's a little hinge, I just pop that up and that pulls right out. Same thing here. Be careful not to poke into that, because these are real easy to damage. But um, not having the tape and having these flip-up connectors helps protect these. And they have a little tab you can also pull on. And you see the two tabs there, and that's going to help me reseat it when I put it back together. Uh, there's one more here. This one's a little trickier. It's got these two tabs on the outside. And we have to kind of simultaneously, <clears throat> excuse me, simultaneously pull up and pop it out of those tabs. So... There we go. So I pushed out on the two outside uh, sides of those connectors and pulled straight up on that. Okay, so looks like, oh, we got one more connection. So these are for the speakers left and right. They're definitely, if you have a flathead screwdriver, it's probably going to help you a little more than this one. It's a little harder to get to it with a Phillips, but I was still able to do that. I think I might have damaged that one. Okay, so looks like I'm all disconnected. It might be a good idea to disconnect these two since they're separate. <clears throat> if you want to try and do it, you could probably pull them together. But for this instance, let's just disconnect one side just in case. And we'll go ahead and unscrew this. Again, oh, there we go, make a square, call this motherboard. See, sometimes it's hard to tell which screws are which, but you can usually determine by looking at what's connected to one single unit on that. Pull that 
hopefully this all comes out together. Ideally it should. Now, this one's a different color screw, which makes me think it's probably a different size. Yeah, it is. So, I gotta remember where that one was. It was on that corner. And if it's on that corner, I'm gonna set it to that corner. Let's see. What else do I have in here? This one might not have to be removed. I might come up with it. But I'm gonna pick it up just to see. It seems fairly long, so maybe it does. Looking. And I'm just feeling around before I pull it up to make sure I'm not missing anything. But it does feel like I still have some resistance somewhere. There we go. I'm trying not to use a screwdriver to pull this up because it's easy to scrape or damage components in here. It does feel like something's still connected. It's a tab here. There must be a screw under this tab. Oh, there was a hidden one. So that's a, that's a good reason why it's good to um, feel around before you start prying up to make sure you got everything. So that should do it. There we go. There's all the components. So I should be able to now take this and transfer it to this point. And in a perfect world, it all fits right into place. And there are little tabs to help you land it in the right spot. It looks like that all went in pretty easily. Make sure I don't cover up this guy because I'm going to need that. Cool, it all snapped in. Um, before I tighten all that down, I just want to make sure. Actually, no, we can go ahead and do that. Um, so I'll start uh, moving these screws over so that while it's still fresh in my memory, which screws went where. The only one that was really important was the little guy that was right here on the end. So I'm going to put this into place. <clears throat> if it fits there. There we go. And so there was just a little tab that fit under that other one for the USB ports. Okay. So that little black screw that was in this corner here is going to go to this furthest corner. And again, this would be easier if I had magnetized the screwdriver. Um, what works best is the is the speaker around a, <clears throat> I mean the um, magnet around a speaker, if you have one laying around somewhere, or just a stronger earth magnet. And you don't have to deal with dropping them into little divots like that. And there it is. So the screws seem to fit into the new holes, which is a good sign. That is, it is a compatible board. So right now we're just doing the reverse of what we just did to take that motherboard off of there. And of course there's no need to rush this since <clears throat> all the components are very small and it's a bit of a tedious job so make sure you got time to do it. it really shouldn't take it's fairly simple to do it's just moving parts from one place to another and if you write out and categorize what screws went where then that definitely helps expedite the process of transferring this over and ideally this mother or this uh, new keyboard that we purchased actually does work there's always a chance of that not working 
just that little tab I had there. Okay, I have all my screws, and that's good also to draw out these squares because then you know exactly how many screws were in it. Um, looks like they're all back in. So I'm going to take this speaker wire, pop it back into place. There we go. This tab. And this actually kind of just sits down in there. <clears throat> these two tabs on each side, they might be hard to see. This one and this one. They actually have little notches in there that it fits onto. You can see them sitting on them. And I'll just go ahead and close that. And now it's locked. Take this one, put it back into place, just slides in, and it locks. It's pretty simple. Okay, that's done. Let's take this side. So this was just a, <clears throat> here's your PCU. And, um, a couple more USB or USB port and looks like headphone jack. So do the same thing to take these off. And since I already used the motherboard screws, I'm just gonna set these in that same square. And then this is the different screw. Fit in that corner. And pop that up. Okay, now it does feel like this one actually has some glue on it here, <clears throat> so it's going to be, I'm just going to have to be careful that I don't tear anything. Gentle with it. Like that, so this one's supposed to come out. Check that. Let's just pop this loose for now. And then I can transfer it after. Okay. There we go. Move this over. And that's that. And this little metal piece. <clears throat> Again, this oops. This little tab right here is going to go under that one. So it kind of goes down in an angle and then sits into place. Now it's got a tab there that sits on. There we go. I'm gonna start with that small black screw. So that was different from the rest. In that corner. Cool. Set these other two. And finally, the last screw here. Okay, so now it's just the process of getting the rest of this up off of there. So I'm kind of just working my way, not really pulling too hard. There we go. <clears throat> and I want to make sure it's facing the same way it was. So again, you got a tab here on this side, a tab on that side. And it should just pop right back into the same place. There it goes. That one kind of slides under. There it is. Alright, and then you got your other speaker wire. You should be able to just push down to lock that. Okay, these do move, but that's just an isolator for your speaker. <clears throat> so it doesn't vibrate the computer. And looks like final thing is the battery. And this should just sit right down on top of everything else. There we go. Cool. 
And I'm going to put the screws in before I reconnect it. And I actually might put these on too before I reconnect it, just to make sure I'm not going to touch anything by accident that short circuits it. Oops. A good reason of why you should label these so that you're pulling your screws from the right category. Those, those screws are probably the same size, but I would prefer to just <clears throat> make sure the screws go back to the same places they came out of. Getting a little too excited here. A lot of fun doing this kind of stuff. Okay, so we have successfully transferred all the components that were attached. And so now we're going to move this one out of the way. I'm going to bring the screen back. And the best way to do this is you start with the hinges open. And we're going to kind of move this into place. Now these have a little channel they have to run through to go around that. I'm going to want to make sure they're out of the way. Same with this one. It's going to want to run through there. So push those against that. Make sure I'm not smashing any wires. And now I'm going to close it. Make it in place. There we go. And that makes it a lot easier than trying to put the screws on while you're holding it up. So once you <clears throat> once it closes, it all kind of snaps into place. So I'm going to reconnect my LED screen. This just slides back in there and then this closes. There you go. And remember with this one, it's color coded, but I also remembered it by saying white on the right, which is on my right, not yours. Um, there's different ways, however you want to remember it. I mean, it is, it is also labeled, so it shouldn't be hard to mess up. It is a bit tough to plug them back in. They just push straight down with a little bit of pressure, but you got to make sure it's lined up. Let's try using the back of the screwdriver. There we go. That one's a little tougher. Harder to get the hands in there. Kind of have to get it on there by feel. Try not to use a metal tip, but it was a lot easier in that case. And then last thing, everything else is connected. I'm going to go ahead and reconnect my battery. And it just pushes straight down. Okay. <clears throat> so, all that's put together. Now we can go ahead and relit it. And most of it should snap back in with pressure. You can also open it and snap it together. So, maybe it was easier to close it. Oh, you know what? Totally forgot to reconnect my hinges. I thought something felt weird there. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Get another reason to label those squares where you put your screws, because then you'll know you're still missing something. Yeah, that would have been 
to do them. Okay. Okay, now that my hinges are actually attached, <clears throat> this should all snap back together fairly easily. There we go. Okay. Another one. All right, and now to put all the screws from the bottom back in. step. Um, in this case it didn't, uh, it's been dead for a while since it's been just sitting in the drawer and I finally decided to order a new keyboard to fix it. But um, once these are put back in I'll charge the battery and I'll power it back up and we should be good to go. missing a hole on this on the new board. I'll use the one for the center. That's for risky take. I think <clears throat> the the new keyboard they sent us was missing a a mount for that screw, but uh, I think we'll be safe without that. It's a fairly cheap keyboard so we're not too worried about it. But that's it, that's how you uh, replace the keyboard on Chromebook. Here's your new one. Um, thanks for watching, feel free to subscribe. If you got any other questions or have other electronics that you think um, I could help you fix, let me know. And uh, just post in the comments below. Thanks for watching.